some yellow cards, a couple issue to both clubs. But other than that, a back and forth championship final so far as we are just one minute into this second half of this championship final. If it stays at nil-nil, or even if both teams score 1-1, as Croatia has a chance in the box now. But Paul back in, shot, scores! Oscar Cordon! This game is over from Warrior Field in Waterloo, Ontario, the home of the University of Waterloo Warriors. The final whistle has been blown, and Toronto, Croatia are your 2015 Canadian Soccer League First Division champions. Turned over though, another chance. Whiteman the delivery, and it's a cracking strike from the Vaughn striker, and he equalizes here in the 39th minute. The leading scorer, Jarek Whiteman, adds to his tally, and that's number 18, and equalizes this match. It's one all. Amato. Up. Can Whiteman counter? He can. Whiteman, he wins the ball. He's on a breakaway here. The strike! Into the corner it goes, and the Azzurri's leading scorer gets the equalizer once again. And it's all tied up 2-2 two to two in the 57th minute. Jarek Whiteman with number 19 on the season and his second of the match. The Chiara now with the delivery. Back post. The header back in. The Azzurri with a chance. It's a box and in the back of it. And it's number three for Jarek Whiteman. The hat trick converted. 3-2 in the 60th minute. You're watching and listening to Mamma Mia. This is Fire Talk Footy Edition with Nicholas Fiore. Welcome back everybody to Mamma Mia. This is Fire Talk. I'm Nicholas Fiore and this is episode 57 and footy edition number 14 of the show. And as you can see, maybe one of the biggest episodes yet for myself personally, I'm alongside Bill Manning, Toronto FC and Toronto Argonauts president at Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment live here at the BMO training ground. I know your schedule is busy, Bill. I know you're probably oh, nonstop, but thank you for joining. Thank you for inviting me. I really, really appreciate it. My pleasure. My pleasure. I love the name. Mama hey, Man. Yeah, I guess it's only fitting with the Italians <laughs> that we have uh, with TFC yeah, now. So, yeah. I mean, I'm wearing the new Ovio and yeah, Senior yeah, jacket. Yeah. So, a little, a little pricey, but we still got it done. All right. Still got it done. Um, well, yeah, like I said, thank you. Thank you for coming coming on i appreciate it. i've had a few a few of the tfc boys yeah, yeah. currently on the show with osorio larea mcnaughton so uh it's 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 been good and yeah. it's been you know i'm very humbled as well for for all this as i continue to grow so yep. appreciate you coming on my pleasure listen this episode is sponsored by the bottom line restaurant and bar downtown toronto 22 front street west the official restaurant of the hockey hall of fame and they say the best chicken wings in the city and that's the bottom line I got to go. I got to go. Um, listen, Bill, you know, you've been here since 2015. Yep. Eight years now. Uh, coming from the States, so far, I mean, hopefully it's a lot more to go. But so far, how have you enjoyed Toronto and, and Canada in general? And how was the transition, even though, yes, we are eight years in now? Yeah, no, we, uh, we loved it. My, uh, both my boys finished school here. My one son went to 7th through 12th. My other son, 11th through 12th. Um, we got a great place up in King City, so uh, about, about a half hour drive to here every morning, which is great. Um, I love the people, I love the sports teams. Um, uh, you know, I, I do enjoy having, you know, four seasons uh, with the weather. It was a little cold this winter, but uh, do enjoy that. Um, I love TFC. Uh, I've learned to love the Argos now. We just won the Grey Cup this past year. Um, and we've had a lot of, uh, you know, really special moments here with TFC, which I'm, which I'm proud of. And, and the people of Toronto are just great. I've, uh, you know, when I say this, it was actually an easier transition here to Toronto for me. I'm originally from New York than some of the other states that I've moved to in the U.S. And so it's, yeah. uh, it's really been great. And the, you know, the embracing of, of the Canadian people, of the Toronto people, I mean, I would say we're pretty nice. But, yeah. you know, a lot of yeah. people sometimes, you know, depends who rubs who the wrong way for yourself. How did you feel embraced from the city? And what would you tell people coming in and how welcoming the city or the country could be? Yeah, you know, I say here, um, 
people embrace differences much better than the United States, actually. And I can say that because I'm American. Um, they really do. And it's, you know, even where I grew up in New York a bit, if you're a little bit different than, than me, you know, or, or someone I'm saying in general, um, you know, until they get to know you, they let you in. Here I find that they actually want to get to know you more and they want to know about you and about your your, you know, where you've been, and, 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 and I find that really, uh, really comforting. So we had a, a, a nice transition. We made a lot of great friends here, um, and it's, uh, you know, I love, I love all the different restaurants I can go to. Um, How know, many Italian spots have you been oh, to so now? So many Italian, <laughs> in the last but, year. <laughs> you know, Persian as well, and Greek. Um, Absolutely. You know, we've had some really great, um, and, and some of the, the different Asian, we've had Chinese, Japanese, it's just been so good, so... Really, uh, the people here in Toronto are special. You know, and that's something about Toronto and, and really Canada. Yes, you could say it's a lot of other places as well, but we're very multicultural. Oh, yeah. And a lot of different cultures and, and cities and, and that are embraced. I mean, you can see it just on the team this year. Yeah. Right, with Toronto FC. Yeah. I mean, how many different cultures that we have. And how important is that, that everyone can be involved and everyone can be included in everything that we can do? You know, I, I think it is important. It, it gives more of a global flavor to things. And I remember growing up in New York, I played for a team, ironically, called the Brooklyn Italians. It was kind of a, a famous team back in the day. And we had players from all over. We had the Colombians and Nigerians and Haitians, wow. Portuguese, Irish, uh, Croatian. Myself, I was like the lone American in a lot of ways. <laughs> Um, and what you find, especially in the sport of soccer, sport of football, it, it's the game. And, you know, you find it doesn't matter where yeah. someone is from or, or anything. You, you quickly find out, can they play the game or not? Are they willing to work hard for the, for the, for the shield, for, you know, for the badge? Yeah. Um, and you get those two things. And then what you find, too, you know, people have a sense of humor all over the world. And so I've... Uh, I've found some of my greatest moments have been with people um, on the field who weren't, you know, who weren't anywhere close to how I grew up, or, or and I find that that great, and I think that's what our sport gives us. I I would always joke, I could go um, in any cab in New York City, uh, and a lot of the cab drivers are generally from from another country, and and yeah. have a conversation with them about soccer. Doesn't get better than that, does it? Doesn't get better than that. <laughs> no, that's awesome, and you know, in in Toronto. It's a big sports city. Yeah. I mean, Leafs, Raptors, Jays, yeah. Argos, yeah. TFC. I mean, those are the, I guess the major five, five but there's five, more. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's the rugby side as well, the arrows. And it's just, you know, there's more and more and more. And it could be hard to manage in, hard to coach in, as I'm sure you, we've seen right through some of the years. How hard could it be, especially as, you know, basically a leader within the organization to like block out the, the haters or the negativity in a high value market like Toronto. Yeah, you're always gonna have that. Um, you know, you equate it to politics a lot of times. You know, in politics, if you're above a 60% approval rate, rate, rating, that is really high, right? Yeah. And, you know, in sports, it's probably, you know, 80% or above is, is really high. And so, um, no matter what, you're always gonna have some dissenters, but I find the best executives, um, and I remember Lou Lamorello telling me this once when he was here at the Maple Leafs. It's you, you, you have to believe in yourself. You have to um, have a good team that you can work with, you know, towards a championship. And you have to be convicted, but you can't be too stubborn not to be flexible and change when needed, right? And so um, one of the things that I found is, is um, you know, good or bad, I try not to get caught up in noise right because sometimes it's good and you feel like oh we can't do any wrong and you also got to keep yourself grounded because it's a lot of hard work and uh you know generally a lot of times you're in the margins and it can go one way or yeah. another uh, based on how the ball bounces sometimes and you know what type of characters you have on your team and the makeup um but i i um i you know now at this stage of my career i rely on a lot of my experience and what has happened in certain situations that I've run into and how have I handled in the past, how has it gone, and that kind of dictates how I handle it going forward. Um, you know, I find when you, you treat people well, you treat your players well, 
your staff, fans, um, and you know, for the most part, they give you the benefit of the doubt during tough times, and during good times, they celebrate with you. And so, um, you know, this is a, a time now at TFC it was exciting in a lot of ways as we're building back up again. And, um, you know, we had a really good run for five years. The last two, two years were tough, especially during COVID. And then now building out of it, you can kind of see little moments coming together. And even this past weekend, yeah. what a great moment. 94th minute goal at the death, you know, to kind of get a home tie uh, in a game that we pushed in the second half. And, um, you know, these ties are eventually going to turn into wins and we'll get on a really good run again. So I try to be, you know, convicted in my beliefs, um, but smart enough to know when, yeah. when, when to be flexible when needed. Absolutely. And, I, you know, you mentioned the, the kindness and, and the respect, how it goes a long way, right? You know, just example of what we're doing here, right? The, the kindness that you have to invite me here. But it goes a long way to, to people then saying, as much as you care, maybe not care, like who you are, right? As a person, how you're going to survey yourself yeah. in the bigger picture. So yeah. that's very important as well. Yeah, no, I, you know, I always try to be myself. Um, you know, you reached out. And one of the things I always find, you know, if someone takes the time to reach out to me, you know, who am I to blow them off or whatever. And you, sometimes you get caught up in your position, but, sure. you know, you have, um, I'm sure, a nice following and, and you had a good thing going on. And I was like, you, you were interested in the TFC. And I was like, you know what, let me take some time with Nicholas and chat with him and give him a little, a little insight into me and the club. And that's, that's what it's all about, right? Which obviously I, I appreciate. I mean, I was telling, you know, I was, I was a TFC two season seat holder for a few years oh, as well. Wow. So cool. I used to play here uh, with Jim Brennan wow. as my head coach oh, with Aurora That's in amazing. League One against TFC three. Oh, so Jim, Jimmy's, Jimmy's one of the originals. Yeah, he's one of the originals. So yeah. I mean, there's there's a lot of connections to that I've you know That's have with awesome. the club here and there. So you know, it's it's just awesome to see where people can just be kind and not get caught up in the higher up position or yeah. setting that they can because. A lot of people do. A lot of people do, and it's it's good to see that there's a lot of people that don't yeah. and take time for you know others as well. So that's awesome to see. Uh, you previously worked in Real Salt Lake from 2008 uh, 2015. The development of the game from then, you know, back in 08, or even you can all the way you know until 2015, from the the states to here in Canada, the development of just the game of soccer. How different uh, was it then? And is now. Oh, it's night, night, and night day. and day. Night That's and what day. I thought. You know, when I joined Real Salt Lake in 2008, it was the year after Toronto had joined the league. I think we had 11 teams then, maybe 12. Um, now we have 29. You have, um, you know, we've now won Concacaf Champions League. You know, back in 2010, my club, Real Salt Lake, we actually were the first. Um, MLS team to reach the final. We lost on uh, on aggregate 3-2 uh, to Monterey at home. We tied 2-2 in the road, which was difficult, but that was a really good run. Um, similar in Salt Lake, we had a really good kind of six-year run there um, with that team. And it, But the league has changed so much. You've seen um, better players come into the league. You've seen players in their prime. Now coming into the league, you've seen some real young talent like a Miguel Almiron come into this league and then move on to the English Premier League. Yeah. Um, you're seeing the growth of, of academy players now, um, which back then we didn't really have. You know, Brendan Aronson and Tyler Adams and Ricardo Pepe and type players. Um, so you've seen so much growth. You see the introduction of these new teams in St. Louis and Nashville and Charlotte that are selling out and having great crowds. Um, so we're really excited about where the league has gone and, and where it will still go, especially with the World Cup coming in 2026. And so I, um, I always try to have a good perspective whenever, you know, someone says, oh, MLS this, MLS that, you know, yeah. maybe not in, not in the best way. I always go back, just look at where we were 10 years ago or five years ago, 20 years ago in oh. some ways. You know, it's night and day. The league has really come ba come far. And so when you do take a little perspective of where we've come, and, and we operate on a global stage, right? So football, soccer operates on a global stage. And, and the respect level now that we have, and especially in Europe, um, is, is 
it's night and day from where we were. And uh, it's what allows us to get some of the players that we've been able to bring into this league to come to this league now. And I was going to touch upon that, you know, straight away. You talked about players coming in the prime and the respect level that MLS is gaining more and more and more. How hard could it be or how hard even it was as much as you can touch upon to attract superstars like Bernardeschi, Insigne, just foreigners in general to, I guess, I don't know if the right word is convince, but, you know, tell them that, no, Toronto is a good spot. Toronto's a great spot. MLS is a great spot. It's not just what you've been maybe hearing. No, we are a good league now. Are we Italy and Spain? Maybe not, but we're a pretty darn good league. Yeah. How hard could it be or was to get these players to come here? Yeah, I mean, it's. Um, I think the growth of the league has allowed these players to um, view MLS in a good light. You know, typically kind of even as, you know, um, in the, you know, in the, from 2015 to 2020, you know, it started to really get better with international players, but still more towards the back end of their career. And then just more recently, and, and you know, Lorenzo and Federico are two prime examples, guys in the prime of their career. And it takes money. You have to make a certain level of investment sure. to do that, which um, we, we at MLSE have done and, and, and other teams at MLS are doing. Um, but it is um, our lifestyle here in in Toronto and you know some of the other cities in, in MLS is really good and it's better in a lot of ways than where some of the guys are living overseas and so um, it always does you have to have a, a strong financial package but sure. but I think the league is no longer considered um, you know below par because uh, really good players are coming here. They're still having national team careers. You saw the World Cup. MLS had a number of national team players, yep. including Canada. Yep. And so we, uh, I just think that's going to continue to grow. And um, as our league continues to push forward, we do have to get better players because we do want to be, you know, I think we're one of the top ten leagues in the world right now. And, and you know, can can we be one of the top five? I mean, that's that's an ambitious goal, but. You know, if you look at our ownership across the board, if you look at our stadiums, if you look at our fan bases and our games, um, we we will get there. And, uh, I, you know, I hope I can play my part in that. You know, you talk about the stadiums too. I know for me, I've been to one other MLS stadium. It was in Nashville when I was there, you know, last September long weekend. And in my opinion, a beautiful stadium over there too. I was it's just there last weekend. We were just yeah, there, yeah. right? And Schaffelberg, former TFC yep. man, he's there now too. And it is a beautiful, beautiful stadium there and, you know, what they've done there. And you can see it just getting bigger and bigger. We talk about players coming in general and how hard it could be or how easy it could be maybe at times. But players in their prime, you know, you always hear and see on the social media platforms that why is he coming here at this, at this age? And why is he coming here at this age? But if it's the right setting for them, you know, even financially too, like you said, why not come yep. here at this age? And why yep. not come here and experience something new? How hard is it to get the players, well, you, you mentioned in general, right? But in their prime years, as they would call it, to come to the MLS. Yeah, I, you know, some of it is, is perception of the league. Uh, that's grown, right? And, you know, like... When Lorenzo was considering coming, he called Mancini, and Mancini said that, "Look, I think the league has grown, and you know, Lorenzo, um, you do what's best for you and your family, and the national team will still be here for you." And so, he got that, you know, a positive reaction from Mancini, and that that helped, right, in his um, in his decision making. And so, I think, you know, it. Players now, you're going to see this next five years, players who are, you know, 28, 29, 30, coming here to MLS teams. Um, and I think we will be able to compete competitively in the market for those players, you know, outside of some of the top Premier League teams and some of the top Bundesliga sure. and La Liga teams, uh, even the, you know, the big three or four Serie A teams, you know, we're going to be able to compete with all the other teams. Um, and... It, in some ways, too, a player, you know, when they come to Major League Soccer with some European pedigree, you know, in their prime, they're, they're, they're not one of many. So where in the English Premier League you have, you know, the, the best players in the world, 
um, you know, you can be a top player on an MLS team, and and that resonates with a lot of players. You know, and you and you you said it there too, right? Like the the big teams. Hopefully, when you're talking about the three or four in Italy, you're talking about Inter Milan. Of course, because that's my team. Of course, that's my team. Of course, they're 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 going down a little bit right yeah, now, but in Champions course. League, knock on wood, yep. they move to the semifinals. Yeah. No, I kid around, but you know, and that's the importance, right? You know, try to just be the most positive direction and 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 maybe ask the people about the league before they come right and as you said that's yeah. what lorenzo did right yeah. so that's awesome yeah. and you know you know good on mancini too to keep that national team going because who knows maybe that could have been yeah no it was um, it was you know, you know something in the thing. good reaction right and yeah. so that that helped lorenzo with his decision making that's awesome um you know we can't always forget about the, the toronto argonauts i mean we're great cup champs yeah, maybe, yeah. right we're great cup champs and what a great cup it was. I mean, we, I watched it at home, and wow, what a change of events in that game yeah, yeah. in order to get yeah. come back and get that yeah. W. Another great cup, uh, a number of great cups for the, for the Toronto Argos. I made sure I got my hat and my T-shirt from, from Real Sports there when we got the W. Is it any difference, even though it's the same position and same role, yep. in managing Toronto FC and the Toronto Argos? Yeah, you know, it is. Um, you know, I have a soccer background. I was a player, and so I'm more involved on the team side of things, the, uh, the personnel side of things, and so on, working with the coaches and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, at, at the Argos, it more was putting together the infrastructure, putting together our, 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 our business operations and the team operations, and then bringing in some football guys that I could really trust and who, who understand what we're trying to do as, as a team and as an organization um, and, and win and put together, you know, a good team. Yeah. And, and um, you know, bringing in Michael Clemens was, um, was, was a, you know, really a, a godsend. He's been a great, great man, but, he, but people always say he's a really good football guy. And, and then um, we brought in Ryan Dimwitty to be our head coach, who w- wasn't a coordinator yet. He was quarterback's coach at yep. uh, Calgary. And he had a really good pedigree, though. Um, his dad was a coach, and, you know, he wanted to be a head coach, and it was the right time. And he's come in, he's done a great job. And what we've done is we've created a good foundation with the Argos now. They're going to they're gonna be a team that's going to be good for, for the next few years, for the foreseeable future. And, you know, that's what we had done with TFC. It's what we're doing again right now with TFC is building that foundation that we can then build around to have a, have a champion. Because any, any good championship club, you need consistency. Yeah. And you need some, you know, some staying power. And, 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 that, and I always believe that comes with a core group of players um, and a good you know, front office staff that's working together. I think that's what us Toronto fans uh, don't don't uh, we don't shy away from you know how much we want that consistency, yeah. but you know we have to understand that we ain't winning every year. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah. ain't winning every year, <laughs> and as long as we want to and would love to, it doesn't happen. Yeah, no, you know? it, it doesn't. It's uh, you know it's something you know I, I joke in some ways. That I've been I think this is my seventeenth year in MLS. Wow, or eighteenth year yeah. in MLS, and and I have. Uh, I've only won, it's my 22nd year in all of soccer, though. I've won three championships. I've won two in MLS. But all the other years, at the end of the day, you fail and you lose, right? You, 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 even when we went, we lost in 2016 and 2019 MLS Cup, Real Salt Lake, I lost in 2013. Um, and you still didn't reach your goal because our goal is to win a championship. That's the end year. goal, I guess, right? But what you do is you reflect on it and you say, okay, did we move forward? Did we... Um, make progress from the year before. Um, do we have staying power? Yeah. And and you know, you, you want to be. And that's what I say because you're not going to win it every year. You want to be competitive, and that's what we're trying to do again: is get TFC to a point where we're going to be competitive. We're going to be a club that can, you know, year in and year out, compete for championships. We had to go through this rebuild. It was not easy, um, but we're coming out of it now, and it's going to be exciting times coming for TFC these next two or three years. How many times have you gotten confused with football and football? Oh, no. I usually I go back and forth between football and soccer. So like Bob, Bob says football. That's it, right? That's he, what I 100%. think. Yeah. 
I go back and forth. Sometimes <laughs> I'll call it soccer. Sometimes I'll call it football. No, you but know. with the Argos, I mean with the, the Argos. That's what, yeah. It's funny because a lot of times people will say American football, and so here we call it Canadian. Yeah, what are the odds? It's uh, it's all all in good fun, but uh, yeah, the football. I'm in charge of the football division, basically, right? And so Let's be honest. Uh, Canadian yeah. football and uh, and our version of, of well, it's Europeans' version of and oh, they call it football, exactly. so soccer. That's amazing. Um, two championships in the last few years. One on the soccer side. Yep. One on the football side. I want to touch upon the differences for you for both, and you know, I just want to bring you back almost even like memory lane. Yeah. You know, because why why not, right? It's always always these hard hitting questions that that you get from people and. You know, why not uh, reminisce in, in good times? 2017, MLS Cup champs yep. with TFC. Uh, got to the final in 2016. Unfortunately, lost. Yep. Um, but probably should have been back-to-back. But, hey, that's penalty kicks. That, yeah. <laughs> that That's a skills competition there in any yep. sport, right? Yep. How was that championship in 2017 for you personally? Um, it, it was great. I, uh, you know, when I came here, there was still, there was a foundation in place, um, but there was still not a finished product and having the experience I had in Salt Lake where we were able to have a real consistent roster and a, and a, and a front office that really worked together. Um, I think I was just able to bring a little bit of experience and some, um, you know, a mindset that, you know, we're in this together and, you know, but we got to go for it. We got to do the things we need to do to win and to win a championship. And, you know, there was a lot of, you know, at that time, you know, when you talk about some of the, the haters or whatever, you you know, that out there, there was a lot of noise about um, relieving Greg of his duties and made a decision to keep him because um, I thought he, he was doing a good job and, and I thought he had the pulse of the team and, and you know, and when it comes together in 2017, you say, you know, and that year it's almost like I knew we were going to win. We were, yeah. we were the best team. The team wanted it. We were hungry. It was our time. And um, that was a really good feeling because I had, you know, I'd won it with, with one club, had an opportunity now to win it with another club, which was, which was great. And it, um, really solidified the, the decision to come here to Toronto. Um, and then last year with the Argos was um, really satisfying in that, you know, when I first took the Argos, and I'm not a football guy, right? And so mm-hmm. you get people say, oh, they got a soccer guy running the, running the football team, this and that. Um, but what it just takes is, is having the right people. And so we had a couple of difficult years, my first two years when I took the Argos, and I knew – I, we needed to make a change, and so we made those changes. And then bringing in Michael, bringing in Ryan, we that those were two key key decisions. Um, yeah. And then some of the staff that they brought in, um, and then some of the players that you know Ryan and, and Michael and Vince Magri and so on have brought in. Um, this team was ready; they were ready to win a championship, and they did it. And and as you mentioned, it was a crazy game. You know, Robbie Smith fumbles and then he blocks oh. the field goal, and it was uh, it was really good. And one of the things I'm really happy now about is that actually both teams and and even with our fans, um, rooting for each other. And so, you know, the, the Argos uh, coaches and staff was out of the TFC game earlier this year, and uh, we have our our holiday party together, Amazing. the TFC and the Argos, and and. There's this spirit that, hey, we're rooting for each other. We're under the same roof. We're under MLSE. And so it was really satisfying. And, and um, having had those first two really difficult years, it helped me actually gain a lot more confidence in my role as president, even though I'm not a, a football guy, having the right people in place, having the right football guys in place, knowing they have someone that will support them and push them and drive yeah. them. Um, we've, we've, we've built a nice foundation with the Argos, so that was satisfying. It's nothing like winning a championship, isn't there? Nothing, nothing like There's it. Nothing no, like nothing that feeling, like I'm telling no. you. And I, and I said, we'll win another championship here. Um, and that, it's, it, someone asked me, that that will actually be my most satisfying because this has been a difficult rebuild, you know. It's been, um, yeah. it's been a tough um, couple of years, and we're coming out of it now, um, but... This one will be this one will be the most satisfying because it was hard. It was you know generally in my other 
positions I've come in and then we've built the championship and this one we had to go through kind of some tough times to win it again. Hey, as your colleague Masai Ujiri for the Raptors said, we're winning again here. Yeah. And, I, you know, you say that now. And everyone, and everyone could say, it's so easy to say. It's so easy for them to say, no, but I, I, I promise you, not because I'm here. I told my mom and dad, I'm like, I truly, honestly believe the Raptors are winning here again. TFC's winning here yeah. again. Because why not? Yeah. No, why not here? Why not Masai's Toronto? Masai's a winner. He knows how to win. Yeah. Um, it's tough. It's difficult. You need so many things oh, to go right. Absolutely. Um, but he has um, a sheer force that will drive that organization. And it may not be next year, may not be the after, but you know he will. He will win yeah. Yeah. Um, with the Raptors again. And then, you know, here at TFC, you know, one of the nice things is I've seen what happens with good teams, what happens with teams not so good, and, mm -hmm. and, and you learn from that. And so... You know, the biggest thing we saw was defense, and we fixed that. Our defense is in a good place right now. we got to get the offense clicking. Not having Lorenzo play hurt us, um, especially early on this year. Um, but we're, um, we're going to win again. You know, we had the opportunity to win the Canadian Championship last year, yeah. which was actually the 2020 version. <laughs> what a, yeah. um, but, you know, we have MLS Cup to play for. That's the big one. Supporters Shield, which is having the, the best record in the league during the regular season. We have this League's Cup coming up this yes, summer. We, do. we want to get back to CONCACAF Champions League because that's the one we haven't win. We have our trophy room. It's CONCACAF We're Champions close. League, MLS Cup, and Canadian Championship. Um, and so, you know, we, we have multiple competitions, and, and we want to we wanna be good in all of them. We want to win and, and be competitive in all of them. And so... Um, we're building towards that, and so I do awesome. see we will we will have more trophies in our in our trophy case. I believe it. I believe Thank it. Thank you. I, I believe. Too. Trust me. As much as my opinion probably doesn't mean much, I believe it. No, we, because it's gonna. We will. I, we, will. we will. And we will uh, get there. you know, and you know, just a couple more questions, just based yeah. on you know this year's start, one six and one. It, the points might not be fantastic, but. Only one loss yeah. in the first eight so games. You, you, a lot of people. You said it the European way, too. Yeah. One yeah. win, one tie, one loss. Because usually that? it's one win, one loss, yeah. one tie. See yeah. that? Well, I am Italian yeah, myself, yeah. my background. So yeah. it makes sense. But, you know, a lot of people don't understand that. TFC has gotten points in seven yeah. of their first eight matches. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's not three. It's not three. But there's been injuries. There's been new players. The gelling together. I just want to touch upon, you know, the possible success that this team can have because it's a long, grueling MLS yeah. season. Yeah. It has been since the beginning of MLS, yeah. really. That the potential could be for this campaign. And as much as you can say, what does maybe successful look for you in the 2023 yeah. season? I mean, we got to be back in the playoffs, right? That That's the first thing. I think um, as this team rounds into form in the summer, um, and then as we get into the fall and go towards the playoff, I, I think this team's going to be very good. Yep. Um, I think defensively, we're not losing games, which is hence the six ties. Yep. Um, we haven't, you know, we haven't, um, our offense hasn't clicked yet. We've got to be more dangerous, especially in the final third. But defensively, they're going to keep us in every game. And... You know, we have a we have an MLS caliber all star um, in Sean Johnson in goal. You know, obviously with Matt and Ziggy Rosted in the center, Richie on the right, Raul on the left. Um, our defense is solid. We have a strong defense now, and and that will eventually win us a championship because you have to have a good defense to win a championship uh, in MLS. Um, I I said I think these ties a year ago were losses. And I think they're ties now. Um, you know, in 2016, when we, in the, that off season, we really focused on defense. We had a losing record into July. And it took a while for that team to really come together. Um, I think with this team, we're not losing. And now it's just, we, and again, it's in the margins, but we got we to gotta flip a couple of these home results into wins, right? We need to win these games. I thought we did enough in Atlanta uh, versus Atlanta this weekend that we should win this game in the second half. Mm -hmm. um, gave up that unfortunate goal, and then we had to battle back. But but you saw the heart of this team to score a goal in the 94th minute. <laughs> um, you have heart, and, and yeah. they pushed it. And, you know, even just a little play with from, from Lorenzo to Jonathan to Jaquiel, both Lorenzo and Jaquiel, both subs on the night. And so 
Um, this team has some grit and they have some character, and, and we just need to see them start to gel more offensively because I think defensively we're really solid, and that's going to keep us in games. So, the, so hence we're not losing a lot. And we get Lorenzo back on the field and with Federico and, you know, get to, you know Dio back. Uh, I, I think this team's going to start scoring goals, and then those, those one points turn into three. You know, we touched upon how I had a few of the TFC boys on, on this show before, and I just want to touch upon Richie. Uh, he unfortunately, didn't have much of the opportunity in Nottingham, which, as a personal opinion, I feel like he definitely should have more. Hey, do we love him here? 100%. Yeah, yeah. I actually think he is one of or the best right-back fullback in Major League Soccer, in my personal opinion. Yeah. Yep. Uh, how good is he how good has he been for us and and that it's like the the rocky bubble the eye of the tiger i feel like he has it 24 7 that just helps tfc every game doesn't it yeah he, he richie's got that fire in the belly for sure he uh he has an edge you know when he plays he has yeah. an edge you know he's the first guy if you ever look <laughs> there's some kind of confrontation he's right in there <laughs> but you know that that's what makes him such a really good player he yes. has that he plays on the edge a little bit um he has a lot to prove um, and for himself, you know, he wants to be a starter in the, on the national team. He yep. wants to play in the World Cup in 2026. Um, I think he wants to be an MLS caliber all-star, a best 11. You know, you mentioned right back. I, I agree. I, I think he, he is or can be the best right back in the league. Um, and I still think he's got more in him. Yeah. I think he Which can is bring scary. it to another <laughs> level. I, I thought... What he did this weekend with his goal was something he can do more often. Wow, yeah. I don't think that's a one-off. I think Richie can do that more often. And uh, um, I think some teams have figured him out sometimes when he comes down the side this way. But what he did is he went inside this time, and right? And so if he can change up his Ooh. game like that, he's going to be so dangerous. So we're so uh, happy to have him, to, to get him back. And, and uh, you know, I do hope we're able to figure out with Nottingham, uh, his future sooner than later, so that we can uh, we can have him here. And, and uh, you know, he's a guy. He's the type player, the type character, the type mentality that yeah. championship teams have. Yeah, I'm not gonna ask you any of anything about keeping him or not. That's not yeah. that's not why I'm here because we okay. all know we want Richie yep. here, but we also know his ambitions and yep. his dreams to play in Europe. So, uh, yeah, just I just have to touch upon that because. You know, he's, he's a beast. He's yeah, a beast for he us, and, and hopefully, you know, he, he will continue that. Uh, just finally, Bill, yeah. you know, I appreciate, obviously, you doing all this, and and uh, we're going to get to the closing soon, but I just want your, your I guess, humble opinion or your advice to young people yeah. and, 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 young, and young kids, uh, not even really for my, myself, just for everyone in the, in the managerial role and in the president, you know, president role. What would you give advice to you know someone that wants to be a president one day in any aspect of of world and of jobs or you know especially now in, in the soccer or yeah. football world well i uh it's a lot of young people who who reach out and i always take the time for them I, I, whether it's a cup of coffee or a phone call um you know the biggest advice i give them is it's okay to knock on doors and doors don't just, and I mean in life and, and, yeah. and in sports and in business and so on, doors just don't, don't open, up, open up for you, right? You have, to, you have to knock. And more often than not, it's not going to open. Um, but one does. And then maybe two does. And then you find opportunities. I think it's important that <clears throat> you put yourself out there a little bit. Um, networking is important, you know, getting to know people. Um, you know, it's how we connected via LinkedIn and it's yeah. how I'm on your show today, right? Yeah. And so you, you took the opportunity to reach out and I'm like, ah, oh, this guy's got a cool profile and, uh, you know, I'll, uh, I'll connect with him, you're a local guy. And so um, I, I, with young people, the other thing that is to have a goal, you know, know where yeah. they want to go. If, if you don't know where you're going, all roads lead there. And so um, if you do want to be a team president or so on, um, how do you get your foot in the door? How do you get, um, whether it's an internship or whether it's, you know, you know someone that works for one of the teams, you know, reach out to them. Don't be afraid to reach out. Reach out to them. Find out how they got in their position. You know, there is no, I say this, there is no correct path. Um, if you go through our office here, we have 
65, 70 people working here, everyone will have a different path. And yep. you'd be surprised at some of the paths how people got into the business. So, you know, knocking on doors is really important. Put yourself out there a bit. It won't come easy. Um, nothing ever does. Yep. Um, but, uh, you know, sometimes it's where there's a will, there's a way. And uh, if you really believe in the business and you want to get into the business, you don't have to start right away at MLSE or Major League Soccer. You can, you know, sometimes just start in, on the ground floor. I started I, I started in the minor leagues of soccer. And so um, it's uh, – there are many, many opportunities, um, you know, and especially young people in their 20s. Um, don't make it about money because in yeah. the early days, it can't be about money. You've got to just get your foot in the door. And then once you do well and you establish yourself, you can make, you can make good money. You can make a good living. Um, but it's about the career and it's about getting the start yeah. in the business. And so don't be afraid to knock on bo doors and don't be afraid if there is no opportunity or if someone doesn't reach back to you or whatever. Just move on, you know, it's, um, and, and continue to try to network and knock on some doors. Wise words, in my opinion. I don't know. I don't know if I could say anything better than that. So that's awesome. Listen, just because you invited yeah, me, I wanted to. I wanted to give you a little, ah, a little mama it. mia. This is fire talk. Uh, <laughs> fire talk hoodie for you. Hopefully, it. hopefully I it's it. uh, nice. it's good. I got I got some merchandise as well. So no, I you know I you know brought something small. <laughs> I, I know it's something small. Hey, you, my even, no, even if awesome. you even if you go it. to sleep with it, and that's all and it's all you do. You know, it's, my it is what it is. That's it. There you go. A nice fall day. That's it. Done. on. I love it. No, you know what? Listen, I. You know, like I said, like you mentioned, people in the higher ups, right? Uh, they don't give, you know, a guy like myself a chance that want to get into hockey or the soccer world, any sports really. But those are my 1A, 1B in broadcasting. The dream job is maybe play by play in professional soccer, play by play in NHL. And uh, I appreciate you taking the time, reaching out, and inviting me here as well. You're willing to come to the bottom line, willing to do the Zoom. So, you know, I'm humbled. I appreciate it very much. Thank and, uh, Hopefully moving forward, who knows? But uh, thank you for coming on the show and thank you for inviting me here and I appreciate it. All right, Nicholas. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. All thank right. you. I really do. Hey, everybody, you. episode number right. 57 and footy edition number four <laughs> of Mamma Mia, this is Fire Talk. Hopefully the next episode, episode, a former NHLer for the Leafs ah. could be coming on the show. Right. You have to wait to find out. Sponsored by The Bottom Line, I'm Nicholas Fiore, live at the BMO Training Ground with President Bill Manning for TFC and the Toronto Argos. And until next time, mamma mia and ciao. <laughs> Lopez. Lopez turns it over. And now Cavallini with it. Cavallini finds Baker. Albanese comes out. Baker gets to it first. Around the keeper and in the back of the net. Blows the whistle. The captain, Dylan Carrero for Woodbridge. The penalty kick. Steps up. And takes it neatly so with a great, brilliant penalty kick strike into the corner. The ref blows the whistle. Whiteman steps forward, looking, and right down the middle with the strike there and the penalty kick in the 19th minute. Anything coming, now a chance for Jason Mills. He comes in, the shot on goal, off the woodwork again, the rebound comes out, to Mills again, shot scores! Oh my word, number 11 with the finish, and that's Brandon Mills. Oakville looking to play long instead of building up. It's going to favor them off the second ball. A chance for the Blue Devils. Can they get anything on goal? Goes back outside looking for the offside call. It's not. Now cross back in. Back door. It's a goal. And the Blue Devils are on the door first. Push back with good defensive play from North Mississauga. And they steal it. And now look at the counter. Can the Panthers go? It's 4v4. Good pace. Botello plays on the far side. They stay on side. North Miss an opportunity. They come on the break with a shot. In the back of the net it goes. And North Miss have one back. Continues with a North Mississauga free kick in midfield. An opportunity here. Shot comes in in the back of the net. It goes. Oh, my word. What a strike. Now back kicked up in the air. One with the header. Place down. McNamara has the opportunity. And in the back of the net. It goes. Corner kick now for Oakville. It's a dangerous one. And in the back of the net again. And it's McNamara. That was Mamma Mia. This is Fire Talk Footy Edition with Nicholas Fiore. Thank you for watching and listening and stay tuned for the next episode.